Press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss another update. Namaskar. Welcome to another episode of Editorial. I've got two interesting topics for you. My topic number one is about uh, stand-up comedian Kunal Kamra. Kunal Kamra heckled Sri Arnab Goswami, the famous Republic television anchor and owner. He heckled him on board an uh, Indigo flight and Indigo announced that they are going to ban Kunal Kamra for flying an Indigo aircraft for six months. Soon after that, Air India decided to ban him too. Soon after that, I am told now even Spice Jet has decided to ban Kunal Kamra for six months. I don't know whether it is for six months or not, but Spice Jet has also decided to ban Kunal Kamra. Now, I am not discussing that topic. My topic for the today is is the left liberal now starting to act like the right wingers? Are they aping right wingers? That's my question for today. And that's my topic for today. My topic number two is 14 people who were sentenced for life imprisonment for the Gujarat riots in 2002. The Supreme Court has granted them interim bail. Let's discuss that in detail. That's my topic number two. Let's get right into the show. So before I get into the Kunal Kamra story, let me also take you through a story which happened three days back on the 26th of January. On the 26th of January, the day Mr. Adnan Sami, the famous pop singer, was supposed to get his Padma Shri award, the Congress leader from Delhi, he tweeted. He tweeted saying, magic of government Chamchagiri. And he linked, uh, he gave a link of Deccan Herald article where they said that, you know, uh, Congress slams uh, Adnan Sami over the Padma Shri or whatever. Uh, he was telling that by Congress ne bula ke Padma Shri was not fair. Giving Adnan Sami the Padma Shri was not fair. So he said, magic of government Chamchagiri. He started. To which Adnan Sami wrote to him saying that, hey kid, did you get your brains from a clearance sale or from a second hand novelty store? Did they teach you in Berkeley that a son is to be held accountable or penalized for the acts of his parents and you are a lawyer? Is that what you learned in law school? Good luck with that. So he replied, he said, what do you mean? Why are you blaming me? You know, just because my father is a park pilot, you know, you can't blame me for it. Now, Javir Shergil re replied, he said, uncle, I can reply in your language, but... Indian culture teaches us to be respectful, even to our enemies. You jumped border only recently, so you guess you are still learning. Objection is to policy of declaring Indian soldiers as foreign and giving award to a family of Pak soldiers. Good day. To which he retorted something else and so on and so forth. It went on. It went on and on. You see, the point is, I don't know whether uh, 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 Adnan Sami deserves a Padma Shri or he doesn't deserve a Padma Shri. On, honestly, I couldn't care either. But what I do know is to accept and understand each other as what one is. And I thought that was liberalism. Mr. Shergil says that your father was a park military or park pilot. How could a park pilot son get a Padma Shri in India? He also goes out to say that you have just crossed the borders recently, Baba. I was in India for a longer time. So you don't understand the culture I do. <laughs> how, how ironic. How ironic. Are you hearing it? The right wing and the left wing are sounding the same. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about. And that possibly is the most dangerous thing that can happen to this country is because even the alternative now will look the same. Adnan Sami got his citizenship on the 1st of January 2016 during the 
नरेंद्र मोदी रिजीम करेक्ट सो वाइल द सिटीजनशिप वॉज गिवन बाय द नरेंद्र मोदी गवर्नमेंट द कांग्रेस गवर्नमेंट हैड एक्चुअली वेलकम इट दे सेट ग्रेट गुड अदनान स्वामी गॉट the the citizen and the citizenship was given based on the architecture the citizenship architecture designed by the congress here this but we already had an entire architecture of anybody from pakistan coming to us and asking for citizenship and we subject to certain rules gave citizenship classic example of adnan sami is there it was given we have the architecture is he hating adnan sami because adnan sami has affinities towards narendra modi and because he has affinities towards narendra modi is this shergil fellow telling him that listen hello you know what now then you are a bad man your father is bad your mother is bad go back to pakistan hearing it see the similarity one person says don't vote for modi go back to pakistan other person says you like modi go back to pakistan so the solution to everything is going back to pakistan a person who gets a citizenship of india is an indian he is a equal citizen as any other indian regardless of his religion regardless of the community he comes from regardless of the caste regardless of everything regardless of possibly even what his father is now let's go to the next incident see the next incident is a gentleman called kunal kamra he has been very vociferous he has spoken his heart out whenever he had to and he did that he went out and he went to this gentleman arnab goswami and he said you are a coward and they were in the flight they were in a small flight this guy took a, a cap a, a, this is a clip just have a look at the clip here i'm asking coward arnab goswami a questions about his journalism and he is doing exactly what i expected him to do is being a coward first he called me mentally unstable and now he is saying i'm watching something he is not ready to answer my question viewers viewers today want to know if arnab is a coward or a nationalist arnab this for national interest i am part of the tukre tukre narrative you should deflate me you should take enemies of the state down you should make sure that the country is in safe hands of narendra modi you should fight against dynasties like rahul gandhi who i support on 10th tughlaq lane arnab you should have a reply arnab arnab are you a coward or are you a journalist are you a coward or are you a journalist or a nationalist who are you arnab who are you tell me arnab tell me i'm here waiting for answer you will have no answers as i expected your cowardice has got the better of you i wanted to have a conversation with you politely but you do not deserve my politeness you know you do not deserve my politeness and this is not for you this is for this is for rohit memula's mother who's cast who's cast you of discussing on your fucking show i know this is not allowed it's fine it's fine if it's not allowed i'll go to jail for this but this is for rohit's mother this is and go fucking find time and read that 10 page suicide letter that rohit wrote so that you have some emotion or some heart or you or you just become human just become human do that do that in your free time you nationalist so he recorded them called him a coward our man mr arnab goswami who otherwise can't keep his trap shut kept quiet was looking and uh, was read goes going through his computer and this guy went on and on and on heckled the man indigo banned him for 6 months see the point is what gives you the right to go down to a man who is traveling in an aircraft and heckle him what gives you the right if the same thing was done to a kanhaiya kumar where a few nationalist gets together so called nationalist gets together and say you are anti national you are tukde tukde gang in a, in an aircraft what would the left all the entire left gang say oh it is intolerance what is this what is this isn't it intolerance see the point is are we going to fight intolerance with more intolerance 
Or are we going to fight intolerance by showing the people who are intolerant as to what tolerance is? Can you remember Gandhi? Do you know what he did? He fought violence with non-violence. He told his opponents, this is the way I want to live my life and this is what we are. And what are we doing? Now, that said, <laughs> the other side of this, the story also also another side. See, looking at, uh, at uh, Indigo, Air India also banned him, Spice Jet also banned him, and so on and so forth. But what I don't understand is how easily we Indians have double standard. Easily. Tuck. A standard for X, another standard for Y. Easily. I will show you another clipping. Now this, I'm sure, I, I, this clipping is courtesy Republic Television. It is their clipping. So I am taking it without their permission. It is their copyright. It is their, their property. I'm taking it. I'm just taking it because I wouldn't have been able to tell you the story if I wouldn't have taken this clip. So I am taking this clip. Just have a look at this clip and tell me what is the difference between what Kunal Kamara did and what is the difference between what this person from Republic is doing it. Just have a look. Well, our news editor, Deepti, has managed to interview Tejasvi, who's Lalu's brat, the person who everyone wants to be out of the Bihar government. Last heard, Nitish wanted him out. He's flown straight down to Delhi, apparently for a meeting with another dynast, Rahul Gandhi. Let's play the interview of Deepti with Tejasvi. Tejasvi, hi, can we quickly have a word with you? What happened in the meeting between you and Nitish ji? How was the meeting? This is not a right place to talk, actually. We don't get to speak to you because you don't speak to the media at all. We will, on time, we'll talk. So, Nitish ji was... What did he say to you? They have to have a, their meal also. Let them... Uh, let's do not disturb them. No, it's not about disturbing. I'll only take two minutes. No, 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 it's fine. So, how was the meeting between you and Nitish ji? I don't have to comment on anything. Why was the meeting nice? Thank you. Nitish ji ka ashirwad mila aapko. Is he okay? Is he happy? It's all okay. Nothing to worry about. Because remember he says ki aap public domain mein jaake clarification dije. We don't need anything else. See, this is not the right time to talk about all this. Why? Why is this not the right time to talk? One second. One second. No, no, that's okay. Kunal Kamra called Arnab Goswami a coward. Harnab Goswami called Tejasvi Yadav a brat. What is the difference? Kunal Kamra went after Arnab Goswami, continuously said, Bolona, tell us, tell me, tell me, do that, what is that, what did you do, what do you have to say? And he kept quiet. This lady, the Republic lady, under the instruction of Mr. Arnab Goswami, goes down and asks, ask, and asks Tejaswini Yadav, Bataiye na, are you doing, is Nitish Kumar right? Are you trying with this? What difference? But you know that lady or Republic was not banned. Not banned at all. Everything was okay. In fact, people said, Arre, kya journalism hai? Wah! But when Kunal Kamra did, Things were not like seen that way. He was banned. So when, <laughs> like I said, different treatment to different people. But that being said, I, I continue to believe and I, I reiterate what happened in that on board that flight uh, Indigo uh, Airlines was not correct. What happened was not correct. Kunal Kamara had no right to go and infringe Arnab Goswami's privacy. I think that was intolerant act. So was the second one. According to a new information that we received, the Minister of Aviation, Mr. Hardeep Singh Puri, tweeted saying offensive behavior designed to provoke and create disturbance inside an aircraft is absolutely unacceptable and endangers safety of air travelers. We are left with no option but to advise other airlines to impose similar restriction on the person concerned. So now the deal is, the Minister of Aviation, the Central Minister of Aviation came in the aid of Mr. Arnab Goswami 
and because arnab goswami was offended the central aviation minister of government of india advised not only the airline concern but all the airlines in india to ensure that they impose the ban on kunal kamra my next story is from gujarat and um, it is about a supreme court judgment on 14 convicts who were convicted for murdering 23 innocent muslims in ode gujarat during the 2002 gujarat riots let me before i get into the actual detail let me tell you what exactly happened in that on that fateful day why were they caught why were they convicted you see on 27th of february 2002 51 car sevaks were killed in a place called godra in gujarat they were burnt alive by some muslims muslims were objecting to the fact that they had demolished the babri masjid in retaliation to this a few days from then on the 1st of march on the 1st of march a group of people went and attacked a muslim dominated village in ode again in gujarat houses were burnt in fact seven or eight houses were burnt people ran helter skelter to to save their lives helter skelter to save their lives and uh, 23 of these people went inside a building a pakka building the reuters gathered around the building burnt the building down in fact the heat was so intense that the entire building got burnt to ground even bones of the victim were burned into ashes is what they say 23 innocent men and women died these people were caught they were convicted based on certain eye witness accounts the session court ordered life imprisonment for them they challenged it in the high court of gujarat high court of gujarat also maintained life in prison and now they went up and approached the supreme court the supreme court after studying the case granted interim bail for these 14 convicts these 14 people who were convicted for killing 23 innocent muslim men and women in a place called ode in gujarat now the supreme court said that listen you know what <clears throat> bail le lo but uh, you can't be in gujarat so you have to go out of gujarat so the supreme court said you uh, a group of uh, 14 may say one group goes and stays in jabalpur in madhya pradesh and the other group stays in indore in madhya pradesh is that you divide yourself and stay in these two cities not in gujarat the supreme court also said told the administration ke bhaiya dekho you get them a some kind of a vocation some kind of a job so that they can fend for themselves they can earn a livelihood while they are staying there whilst they are staying there during the interim bail the supreme court also said that your bail is subject to the fact that you have to spend at least 6 hours in a week 6 hours in a week in spiritual and or community service spiritual and or community service you have to spend 6 hours because only then this bail will last otherwise we will pull back our will take back our bail which means you will be put behind bars again lot of talks lot of talks about you know unfair lot of talks about people saying listen how can they get bail they have killed 23 innocent people they are convicted by the high court of killing 23 innocent people burned them to death burned them to ground burned them into ashes they say that you know all of a sudden we see that uh, one by one
people who are committed act against Muslims are either acquitted or even given bail or set free or whatever. So, it's kind of adding a lot of uh, fuel to the already lit fire. That's one end of the story. The second end of the story is uh, spiritual and community service. What exactly does spiritual and community service mean? This is one thing which I am very intrigued. Would attending an RSS shaka, would, would it be taken as spiritual? I don't know. I am asking. Would attending an RSS shaka, would, be, would it be spiritual? So, would these, could these men go and attend a shaka and say, oh, I have done my spiritual service? Would, could these men attending a Ram Janma Bhumi meeting, would that be seen as spiritual? I am asking. What exactly is spiritual? And till such time that we don't have clear definition of spiritual and I am sure we don't have at the moment, how can a court order a group of men to go and do spiritual and community service? I didn't, I didn't quite understand that. I am sure the honourable court has its reasons for giving such a verdict and I am sure the honourable court knows what it is saying but I don't. So that's why I wanted to kind of make this end into a point. But that being said, I'm sure the court has gone by the law. I'm, I'm sure the court has gone by the IPC. Court need not take emotions into consideration. Court need not take emotions into consideration. Court has to take the law into consideration. So I'm sure the court has taken law into consideration by giving these 14 murderers interim bail. We will wait to see the decision of the Supreme Court, the judgment of the Supreme Court on these 14 convicts. Till we meet again. Namaskar. Now be the first to know about the latest updates on our new news app. Go on your Android or iOS, search for HW News Network. Download our app. Choose the language you prefer to get updates in and be up to date with the latest news.